Broadcasting from the inner sanctum of human emotion. Just got personal. America's first competition talk show. You're in the hub. Yes, we can. The bill is passed. Yes, we can. There ain't no rule around here. We make them up as we go along. We are done. We have to pass the bill so that you can find out what is in it. The American public overwhelmingly voted for socialism when they elected President Obama. We suffer from a fiscal cancer. This will leave us far worse off in the future than we would be if we acted today. We've killed what made us a great nation. Yes, we can. This is what change looks like. Is the U.S. on a slippery slope to tyranny? Because when you look back to the to, to, when you look back to the uh, the examples that we have of this in the 20th century, uh, built on the philosophies of progressivism and postmodernism that were do, uh, produced and, and initiated in the middle of the 19th century, you see a lot of, of rape and pillaging going on, uh, especially in Europe. I mean, you see uh, Hitler back in the 1930s. The focus that he gave to what uh, uh, what uh, Vladimir Lenin eventually called the useful idiots. Uh, specifically encouraging folks who had not been involved in the political process before to uh, to get involved because there was less pushback to his ideas, to his policy, pe- policies, people that had not critically thought about the implications of what we're trying to implement and had not thought it through and, 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 and were a lot more useful for coming in because it's a numbers game. Politics, no matter where you are, in large part, is a numbers game. He knew he needed numbers, and so he went to those who were, who were too weak need to understand it. And, and honestly, I see a lot of that going on today, uh, and, 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 and a demonization of those who are actually following, who are actually reading, who are actually educating. Headlines and, and, and ad hominem attacks and superficial arguments pass for arguments these days. And more and more we're expecting less and less, not only out of our candidates, but out of our public servants. And, and I don't know if I'm off base in any, in any place, but, but um, you know, how do you guys feel about this? And, and do you see the same trend coming? Where do you feel a soul is, is, what do you feel he's getting at here? Do you see this happening at the national and the state level? Uh, I'd Jerry? say we're on the slope and we're over the edge and mm-hmm. we're picking up speed and not much to grab onto. That's where we're at. Uh, I mean, that's the reality of it. You know, the, the good news is, Joel, that I think people are waking up, uh, but we're not fully awake yet. Uh, there's there's more to go. We still have a lot of folks that are sitting on the couch with their remote control. You know, comfort always leads to complacency, and complacency always leads to complicity. And we are fully there right now, and we've got to we've got to wake some folks up. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing is that the headlines they that we always put the headlines up front, and and honestly, the most. The most visible ones are the ones that we focus on. Things yeah. like the oil spill. We hear about the health care. A lot of us have been following cap and trade. A lot of, a lot of us have been following the, the financial reform that's coming down right now and may get a vote in Congress in July. And those are the kind of fakes, th- things that folks that read the Wall Street Journal every day and other things pay attention to. And lo and behold, the president's approval ratings go through the floor all of a sudden after the Gulf oil spill. Why? Because the majority of Americans begin to see it at that point. It impacts their lifestyle. Up to this point, it's all been on paper. I'm here to tell you it's going to be more than on paper in another year. But why do we do this to ourselves? How do we get to this point, Nate? Uh, it's, it's, it's complacency. It's materialism. It's worldliness. That's what it is. I mean, it takes your eyes off of the prize. I mean, the, uh, the forefathers, when they initially designed this, this country, you know, we had a two-wing type uh, uh, government. We had uh, a left wing and a right wing, one wing leaning toward tyranny, the other wing leaning toward anarchy. And our, our founders designed our, our country, our government, to where we will be balanced right in the center. And both wings were designed to check each other. Well, we have a left wing right now that is bent on attempting to fix every problem that we have. And they are using every trick that they possibly can, can pull out of their, their hat to bankrupt the, the country. And yeah, I mean, if I mean, when when your child isn't even born yet, and they owe forty five thousand dollars to the federal government, I would say we're 
we're falling off of the cliff. I mean, we're free falling, and, and you know, we, we have a, a slim chance of, of recovery. But and I think that people are waking up. But the, the administration right now is moving pretty fast. They're, they're 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 trying to put the capstone on. So I think we need to hurry. Well, I think you get to a, a very big point right there. I mean, you talk about the dumbing down of society and the useful idiots, as, as mm-hmm. they talked about back in Russia. At this point, we've got fifty percent thereabouts that are that are not paying federal taxes anymore. So they're voting for their own wealth at this point. They're not voting because of any issue other than making sure that the bread still rolls into their house. I mean, if you, you know, I hate to refer to Atlas Shrugged. It's, it's kind of a, you know, a lot of people talk about it, but it's a thick book. Yeah. yeah. But if you, but if you look at it right now, you see all around you, what's, what happened, what is described by Ann Ryan quite well in that book. It's going on all around us. You notice driving around Georgia here lately, the lawn, the grass is not getting mowed by the expressway, uh, you know, around the expressways, around the roads, because they don't have the money to pay for it anymore. They can't fix a, a, a relatively, I mean, an oil spill. They can't, they can't do anything about that. They can't get skimmers. They can't dredge. They can't do anything because the resources just aren't there. They've taxed themselves and over, you know, built this big bureaucracy. They've become so big that it's become totally ineffective. It's going to take a real revolution. I mean, it's going to take somebody that stands up and the Tea Party is a good movement. It, it, it's moving us in the right direction, but it's going to take a real visionary, somebody that can really stand up and a very effective communicator that's going to be able to turn this thing around. And I don't, I don't know who that person is right now. I don't really see him out there on the right. Whitney's well, going to do Whitney, it. Whitney, Whitney <laughs> right is not right she gets, We just made news. Right after, she gets a, right after she passes the bar next month, that's her next step. She's Sarah gonna, Palin, move over. <laughs> that's right. Um, uh, Whitney, really, what do you think? I was just going to say that I am eternally optimistic. Like, You know, I feel like this country has been through this kind of thing before, and I think that even the useful idiots at this point are starting to feel it hit home, and and they know they've been duped. And so I'm very, very optimistic that the Democrats are out at the next election cycle and that Obama's only in for one term. And I know it's going to take a lot to fix the damage that's been done, but I'm very optimistic that this country is resilient and that even the useful idiots that are complacent will wake up when it starts hitting that close to home, and I think we're at that point now. Well, and and you think about, you know, just another example of this, the $20 billion fund that the president just confiscated from the American taxpayers in order to, uh, or excuse me, uh, excuse me, from BP, in order to extract the, uh, the, the, the their due, uh, what they owe out of them. And, and people completely gloss over the constitutional fact that he has no authority to do that without due process of law. He cannot, he cannot just extract $20 billion out of their you know, rear end, uh, no matter how it might make us feel or make the country feel. Uh, but, but they, will, they willingly gave up the money. Bar- they came to the table. They walked in t- to the room well, they're European knowing it, that that was going to happen. I mean, it, it's a, it's amazing to me that, that a they CEO, did. Yeah, that they would walk in. Yeah. I mean, 40% of their shareholders live in America. I mean, that's affecting 40%, you know, that those people in America because that money's coming off of the profit line of BP. BP should definitely pay for it. There's no doubt about that. But there's no way that that should have happened. And BP yeah. shouldn't have let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like Gary. the bankers. When the bankers marched in you know, a year ago, you know, and they marched into the White House, like 20 of them, and they all came out and they were, you know, these are the most powerful men in the world and women. And they came out and they had their heads down like they had just been, you know, taken to the woodshed or something. And, and they just surrendered, basically. And then they run across the street control. and buy drinks for each other because they probably yeah. got out a lot cheaper than if oh, they, you, you bet. know. Yeah. Bet. Yeah. It's well, amazing. Absolutely the, amazing. And, and the thing that I hear and, and, and talking about useful idiots, the thing that I hear all the lot, it makes me sick to hear it, is, is the, the, just the clarion call that you hear so often these days is that the system is broke. The system needs reform. The system ain't broke, folks. And everybody, every time that I hear somebody say the system is broke and needs some fixing, I have to wonder about that person because the system is not broke. We have not been using the system. For a very long time, we have not been, as citizens, engaged at the level that our founders knew we must be as a lifestyle of civic literacy to, 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 to perpetuate the form of government that we have. It's all about knowing the system, knowing your role in it, knowing your place on the map. We've got to get a picture of what the map looks like again. We've got to get a picture of the Constitution again. We've got to get a picture of what community looks like again and why we're all here to begin with. And I've mentioned this a few times before, but September 17th is a day that we're going to do that because we're going to show a map. And we're going to show our place on the map. It's going to be an exciting thing if you live in the state of Georgia. I would love to have you there that day. You'll be hearing more about it from me in the next uh, in the next few weeks, in the next couple of months. But that day, we are going to start to show the map for what it is, and start to pull us together around upholding the system that we've neglected for so long. We'll see you tomorrow on the Hub.